Let's say it together. We'll start a little. Ready? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. We have preached about many messages of what you're supposed to do to be a good Christian. You're to love your neighbor. You're to not sow discord. You're not to do this. You're not to do that. And all the time, preachers are preaching on this, and preachers love to preach on stuff. And I have preached about grace and about living holy internally and externally. Doesn't matter, but make sure your heart's right with God, or you won't make it into the kingdom of heaven. And so, but I wanted to know from God that if it's with faith that pleases you then I want to make sure that I please you but I don't want to you that your faith is shaky is because you don't believe that God loves you today I'm not talking to telling you to love your neighbor or to love God tonight I am telling you that God loves you Lord, show me this week the Pharisees did not believe that God could possibly love someone like the harlot or someone like the Magdalene or somebody like Peter or somebody like James and John, the sons of thunder, or somebody like Andrew. Or somebody like God loved these people when they had done absolutely nothing for God. And that is where the scripture came to me is John 3, 16, for God so it is them saying that for God so loved, if you obey this law, for God so loved, if you obey this ritual, for God so loved, if you go to this church, for God so loved, God, he said, for God so loved the world, that he gave this only, he loved you, Paul says, while you were in. We don't pray for sinners. You know why? 
because we believe there's some kind of qualification based on man's rules and regulations for somebody to get healed. Let me tell you, how many Christians did Jesus heal during his ministry? Zero. None. Absolutely none. Remember the man that's laying at the gate and he is laying on his mat and Jesus walks by. And what does Jesus say to him? Do you want to be healed? And what's he say? I have no man that can put me in this water. Now, why did he tell him this? Because this man had burned every bridge he'd ever had in his entire life. Have you ever seen people that were meaner than snakes and later in life they have a stroke and they can't get nobody to help them at all because they was a devil when they were on this earth. That is exactly what happened to this man. And he is laying there on his mat and Jesus walks up to him and goes, do you want to be well? And the guy goes, well, I have no man to put me over into that into the water and into the pool. And he says, and they, because the Bible says an angel came by at a certain season and stirred the waters. And it made the one, anybody that got in the waters when it was being stirred, they would be automatically healed. And he said, I have no man to put me into the pool. What does he say? Take up thy bed and walk. Amen. Now, what does Jesus say to him later? Jesus stops him, and he doesn't say that you got healed because you stopped sinning because you're a cripple. Let me tell you something. There are certain things you can't do when you're crippled up. So here's exactly what happened. He comes by, and he says, listen, go and don't sin anymore. At least worse than coming. Amen. And that's what Jesus said. He thinks the reprobate, go next door and tell him that God loves you. God loves you just how you are. I don't believe that. I know you don't say that's the devil speaking. Are you with me? Just like what did she say? I can't be a Christian. God would have me in front of my daughter and says God would not have me. And then she starts unloading all the sin. I slept with other women. I sleep with other men. I've had so many sexual partners, I don't know who they are. And a lot of drunken bashes, I walk up, wake up, and this is a girl. I don't even know who I've been with that night. God would not have me. Let me tell you something. When Mary Magdalene went inside the house and washed Jesus' feet, even though she had seven demons, even though she might have been most likely was a prostitute, Jesus accepted her, and she said this, He loves me. And so he went right in that house and had to deal with the shame of all the religious people around the table. Saying if they knew what manner of woman that was, he wouldn't have a thing to do with her. When the woman was caught up in the well, Jesus said, yeah, and I've talked about this ten times, but he goes up to the well, it's the same thing. The woman had faith to believe that even though I've had a life that has been looks like hell, that God still loves me. That is faith. When the Roman soldier knew that God loved me, Don't even have to come to my house because I know how authority works, see? I am a great man myself. And I have people under me and I have people above me. And when I say do it, they do it. And when I say to this one, he'll do it. And the thing is, is I know that when you say something, it is done. That is faith. Faith starts with believing that God loves you or faith is useless. It is cast out. It does not exist. That's right. And Faith and love go hand in hand. If you believe that God loves you, then you can believe that God will get you through the situation you're going through. If you believe that God loves you, then you can believe that God can love somebody else. When we go and we witness the people, it should be telling them, first off, God loves you just like